Welcome to the Afro Centuries podcast, where we explore everything from personal development to fulfillment, African pride, dating, and all things that make your spirit thrive. The Afro Centuries podcast is not just for Afrocentric people, but for everybody. Our shows will entertain as well as educate and focus on uplifting positivity. So take some time out on your commute or lunch break and plug in with us and be inspired. The Afrocentries Podcast, proudly African. Hi, welcome back to the Afrocentries Podcast. It's Discovery Tuesday again. I want to start by saying Happy New Year. Edith Young is with me in the house today. How are you doing, Edith Young? I'm doing great. Happy New Year to Solomon. Happy New Year. How was your New Year experience? (laughs) Oh, yeah, it was just a time for me to just rest and reflect because it's been a year. Last year was a full year. (laughs) So I took a time to ensure that I actually rested and not entered the new year tired. So (laughs) that's what I did. And it's been good so far. I feel refreshed. I feel pumped up. Yeah. Awesome. That's a very good idea. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, what do we want to talk about today? It's a new year, fresh start. Yeah, fresh start. <laughs> yeah, things don't change simply because we entered into a new calendar year. There's a, there's, a, there's a lot. People are talking about the new year. I want this, I want that, I want that. But the truth about it, and, I hope, and people are hoping that the new year will be this for them, that for them. But the truth about the matter is that you are the one who actually makes the year what, what you want it to be, not the year making it for you. You understand? It's the reverse. So we have come to realize that it's what you do that makes the year actually different from the previous years. So what is it that you want to do differently this year so that you can get a different result? Because it is said that it's a fool that does the same thing and expects a different result. So if you keep up with your old habits, you're sure going to get the same experiences or even worse. But if you choose to turn on a new leaf and um, do something new, something that will walk you towards your goal, I'm sure you'll have a great year. So that's why we're started talking about starting afresh. What are the things that we need to do to be able to move us closer or move us closer to our goals, move us closer to a fulfilling life that everyone desires. Yeah. Absolutely. So we want to see what we need to be doing for the new year. You know, it's it's a time where everyone or most people write resolutions. Most people see it as a time to take stock, to start new. And um, Mm -hmm. some people, it's like a scary moment for them trying to start afresh and how to go through it. So we want to see how we can walk through that phase this time. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. From what I've been able to put together, I realized that the first way, the first thing to do is to assess your situation. Where are you right now? You know, how was the last year? What went great? What didn't go so well? What areas do you need improvements? What areas were you really, really good at? What results did you come up with? You know, did you accomplish as a result of the things you did? It's good to take stock and make, do that evaluation, assessing your situation. It helps you realize the areas where you need improvement. And it also helps you realize how amazing you actually have been at doing some certain things. Most times we don't give ourselves kudos. We don't even realize how much progress we have made in our life. So it's also, it serves as a basis for improvement and helps you to be able to evaluate your strengths, your weaknesses, and the areas where you need to make improvement. So that is the first thing I encourage everyone to do, to assess the situation. Take stock of if you have an end of year evaluation guide or program, you can go through that. That will help you to evaluate every aspect of your life financially, physically, spiritually, mentally, so career-wise, you know, you do that evaluation in every aspect of your life. That way you, you it puts things in perspective. You'll be able to tell yourself, you see yourself for who you really are, not just an, 
an exaggerated, bloated image of who you think you are. But you can see the papers, you can see, you can actually see the areas where you need to make amends and then put some adjustments and the areas where you're actually doing well. So that self-evaluation is very important. So that's the first step I believe that we should take on before we move on to make resolutions. So, yeah, that's the first step for me. That's very true. Evaluations are very important. It helps you go through what the last 12 months has been like or the last couple of years, depending on who you are. Probably you've not done it for a long time. So it's very important. The second one is starting early. Most people lose a lot of time procrastinating and thinking mm -hmm. there's still so much time. You know, we yeah. just started and people feel like, yeah, I've had, I have 12 months to go or I still have a lot of time. But the truth is it runs so fast. Before you yeah. know it, <laughs> it's going to be true. And then you go yeah. like, oh, six months gone already. And then people start buckling up their shoes, trying to meet up with deadlines, trying to feel like, oh, I need to achieve something. Rather than falling into that trap, it is important to start early. Work on those plans. Do those things. Get through all the things you want to achieve for the year. Start mm -hmm. immediately. Don't have that mind like, oh, yeah, I've still got like a month or two. Or, you know, I can do one or two things. Yes, you've got a month or two. But the truth is time flies. So it's yeah. time you start early. Okay, that's really good. That's really true. You have to start early. So one of the best ways to start is actually to make, to write out your goals, what people call New Year resolutions. They are not bad. You know, obviously, it's over, it has been overflogged. People talk about New Year resolutions and people think it's a scam, but it's not really a scam. It's something that can get you in the direction of your goals. So you have to, you know, sit with yourself and find out, like I said, having done the evaluation, the assessment of the previous year, you are able to see the areas where you need to, you know, make improvements. So you sit with yourself, you write out your resolutions, your smart goals. They're actually goals anyway. So they, are, they shouldn't be generic things like I want to be wealthy, I want to be healthy. Those things are generic. How does it relate to you? You know, there must be resolutions that are suited to you. You know, so through the process of setting these resolutions, you must ensure that your resolutions do not begin on January 1st and end December 31st. There have to be things that you continue doing because see it as a way of, as a way to better yourself way beyond the limit of time. Now, if you have, if you set a resolution, like I'm going to be reading um, um, two books every month, you know, something realistic, actually. Don't go saying, I want to read one uh, five books every month. Something that you know your time should do, your workload wouldn't permit that. Do something that you know you can, you can accomplish, you know, even though it might stretch you, but not something that's completely out of the way that you, at the end of the day you feel like a failure. So when you set your resolutions, the next thing is to put checks in place that will enable you accomplish and keep to the things that you have said you're going to do. One of the ways to do that is draw up a schedule every day, have some time to meditate on maybe previously the night before or early hours of the day, you wake up early, start your day early. That means that you have to go to bed early too. Those are good resolutions, good, good goals to set actually, because the truth about the matter is that when you're well rested, there's a whole lot you can accomplish. But when you feel, when you're not well rested, it's, it's going to affect your day. So it's one of the good goals to set is to go to bed early so that you wake up early, refreshed, and draw up a schedule. Put timers, plan, you know, use your phone, smartphones. There are so many resources in your phones that could help you block some distractions. Like you have this app block that blocks out some apps within some certain time frame so that you can focus on productive work. Those are the things that you should do. Resolutions should be things that you should continue doing even after the year goes out. So it's important that you do that for yourself as a means of starting afresh. That's absolutely correct. Goals are very important. But there's something else I admire more than goals, and that's growth. You know, while making your 
goals or while setting your goals, ensure that you want to grow. You're putting growth as part of those goals. So what I'm trying to say here is, for example, rather than just saying, I want to lose 10 pounds in this new year or in the next three months, how about you write the goal in such a way that it helps you grow? A better way would be you saying, I want to be someone that lives a healthy life, or I want to be Mm -hmm. someone who goes to the gym three times a week. The difference here is when you just want to lose 10 pounds in three months, you get so concentrated on losing 10 pounds. And the truth about it is you don't get to notice that difference. You don't lose 10 pounds the first day you go to the gym or the second day you go to the gym. It takes some time. It's something you continually do. But when your mind is just concentrated only on the goal of losing 10 pounds, going to the gym every day becomes a struggle. You struggle to go there. You just want to lose 10 pounds in two or three days. But when your goal is set in a way that you want to grow and you say, I want to be someone who goes to the gym three times a week. Now, all you want to think about is going to the gym. You say, yeah, I've gone to gym day number one today. And then the next time you go, you count day number two. The other time you count day number three. And you're like, yes, I'm going to the gym three times a week. Now, here's the trick about it. There is no way you keep to going to the gym three times a week and you won't be able to lose that 10 pounds if you do it right. So the idea is concentrating on growing rather than just a one-time goal. When you set your goal for the year, let it not just be a one-time goal. Yeah, one-time goals are awesome and there are a couple of things you're just going to set down for one time and move on. But concentrate more on the bigger picture of being a better person, of growing, of being the person that um, studies rather than the person that just wants to get um, a first class. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. But now there's no way you will be someone who studies and you won't get a first class if you do it well. So while setting your goals for the new year, consider growth as a very important aspect. Very well, very well. You know, it's it's well said. To consider growth, you need to find out how you must have a voracious, you know, appetite for learning. Because one of the things you want to accomplish, you have not done them before. So it's important that you go out to find out how you can accomplish them. There are so many resources, YouTube videos, audio books, you know, magazines, online group. There are, I mean, coaching programs and trainings that you should embark on. It's important that you go for knowledge. Don't just assume that because you have a good intention, everything it's everything will be fine. No, good intentions are not good enough if they are not backed up with your appropriate knowledge, appropriate wisdom. Sometimes you need to get yourself into an accountability group, get yourself into a coaching program, you know, enroll yourself. Why? Because you can't do life by yourself. There's a whole lot of help out there that you should be able to take advantage of to enable you you know, have a productive year. So I would advise that you go on for knowledge, go for tutorials, that many YouTube tutorials, you know, that will help you. Read about people who have accomplished the things that you want to accomplish. Find out how they, how they went about it. Autobiographies, biographies are very important because the, the, the secrets of men are in their stories. So it's important that you, you do that. Do your research very well. Because if you don't prepare well, you will fail well. <laughs> you, if, you, if you fail to prepare, you, you are preparing to fail. So it's important that you make your adequate preparations. What are the things that you need to, to get to accomplish, to accomplish your goals? Find out those things and you know, set out to learn. If you don't know them, set out to acquire the required knowledge that, you would, that would help you, the resources that would help you accomplish your goals. Yeah, so I think that's also important to note. Yeah, that's true. And another important thing is don't be afraid to start small. I like what Mm. you said. While looking at people who have succeeded, who have done what you've done or what you're trying to do, also understand that they started somewhere. 
Yeah. When you look at those people at the top today, they, they, they were not just born at the top. They, they came from a certain place and they drove themselves right to the top. So don't be scared of starting small. Rather mm. than looking at people and saying, wow, he's here, he's somewhere so high, or has achieved this or that, go down to the beginning of their story, how they started, what they went through. You can find comfort in them knowing that it's okay to start small. Mm -hmm. It's okay to start with something little and build it up. That's the mindset I want you to have in this year. Saying, yes, I want to do something big, but I'm not afraid to start small. The truth is this. Everything big you see today is made up of little things. Mm. To start with something small, be consistent, and build it up to where you want it to be. Okay. Wow, that's really true. That's really true. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. You know, don't aim for perfection, but aim for progress. You always glean experiences in every step that you take, but you will never know what it will take if you don't start. So it's always good to start small. Take the first step. It might look scary. That's why it's important that you gain knowledge because when you gain knowledge, it's, it's, it actually amplifies your steps and um, it, strength, it gives you the, co the courage to move on with knowing that you actually have an idea of how to go about it. So taking the first step, it's very important. Then That's I true. Think By the way, the there's question. something I saw online today. That was amazing. You know, when they keep saying practice make perfect, I saw mm -hmm. an amazing interpretation and that's wrong. Practice, it's wrong. practice doesn't make perfect. It doesn't make perfect. You may not no. be able to achieve perfection. There's always a way for improvement. So practice, mm -hmm. practice makes improvement, not mm -hmm. perfection. Yeah. yeah. Not doesn't perfection. make perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, important yeah. to note. Okay. Then finally, we talk about rewarding yourself. <laughs> Don't wait for the 31st of December to reward yourself. Most <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, it, it's you know I learned something earlier in the year about last year talking about a ninety days upgrade. It's important that you see your year in batches. You know, if you set goals for the for a full year goal, it's only what time would you have to be able to evaluate your progress? But when you make it a thirty a three months, three months like quarterly goals. That way you will be able to assess yourself, you know, have a date with yourself, find out how, how well you're doing and all that. So that, that also gives you an opportunity to reward yourself because we understand the power of 90 days. A lot is better in 90 days. You know, a, a baby stays in the womb for nine months and they are like three trimesters. Their yeah. goals, yeah, they, you know, it helps you know whether you're making progress, whether your baby is doing well. That's why you have periodic assessments, visitations with your doctor. So that's how it is with life. There's, you know, there's this quarterly, you should be able to imbibe that in your growth plan where you assess yourself every three, three months. You could do that. Some people do that every month, but I feel that a month might be a short time to be able to truly give a good evaluation of how, how, how well you're doing doing so I would rather that you go for the 90 days upgrade such that you know after every 90 days every three months you sit there every quarter you're like okay what are the things that i've achieved in this quarter that way you can look at four deliverables at the end of the year like you delete you've had like four you know <laughs> deliverables so it's important that you do that so that you can have time to reward yourself reward yourself self-care is very important because the truth about the matter is that is this very cool your body that you need to accomplish all your goals. So you must find time to appreciate yourself. I, my family and I, we did that today. We just went out and, um, you know, just enjoy, just have some time to reward ourselves for the new year and praise. And we actually felt good. I'm like, wow, we should be doing this often. That's because nice. It, <laughs> yeah. It helps you refuel, you know, that was impromptu, but I, I, I want to make it, a, a regular thing that would do, you know, so because that way everybody is, feels new, feels fresh, feels appreciated, feel, 
still, you know, just taking good care of yourself, going for that spa treatment, it's, your body will feel good <laughs> that, oh, fine, you recognize that I'm doing well. <laughs> yeah, and so it's important to reward yourself. So, what, what are the things you do to reward yourself? Oh, yeah, that's nice. I just, I like reading by the pool, you know, just, uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of tanning. Yeah, I think I've, I've got like a lot of good uh, melanin on my skin. But then mm-hmm. just like, uh, what I do is I go into the pool, swim for a while, come back on mm-hmm. the bed, read for a while, go back into mm-hmm. the pool, just in and out for about mm-hmm. two hours, probably during the weekend. And it's mm-hmm. always awesome, you know. It's something I, I, I do it every weekend, uh, by the way. Just in and out. Yeah, so it's awesome. Yeah, we should we should imbibe that. It's a good culture. It's a good culture because our body is a vehicle that we need to transport us to the destiny, the future, or the big future that we anticipate. Yeah, so we need to take good care of it. That's the way we, took, we take our, veg- our vehicles for servicing often. So we should do that for our body. Refuel, refire, so that you can be able to, you know, accomplish more. Yeah, yeah so... That's true. And rewarding yourself may not really be going on a trip or taking that vacation or lying on the beach. It may be just finding time to take off from work and sleep. Yes, yeah, sleep. Yeah, that oh. would be a reward, yeah. So Very it's also good, <laughs> good to know that. Yeah, so thank you guys for starting up the year with us. We look forward to bringing you more interesting content this year. And don't forget to add us up on Instagram at the Afrocentrist Podcast. We'd like to hear your reviews. We'd like to know what you think. And thank you for being part of this family. All right. Have yourself a great year. Happy New Year. And stay good. Bye.